Okay, in this video we're going to continue module 30 and this is using the remainder theorem to evaluate a polynomial. Now they're asking you to find p of negative 2 and this is the polynomial you're given. Now we do know an old technique on how to find p of negative 2 and that is just to plug in um, negative 2 for x. And so we know that the answer should be 12 just based on our old techniques on finding p of negative 2. However, what they want us to do is use the remainder theorem to find p of negative 2. So although I know what the answer is, this is not the method that they want me to do to find it. So in order for you to do the remainder theorem, basically what the remainder tells you is that p of k, any number, is equal to the remainder after synthetic division, where k is outside and your coefficients for p are on the inside. Okay, so if I set this up, k, which is negative 2 in this case, is going to go outside the synthetic division setup, and then I need to have all of my um, variables here. Now, the highest exponent is x cubed, so that means I have to have a coefficient for x cubed, a coefficient for x squared, a coefficient for x, and then a constant. It has to decrease in that manner. Well, the coefficient of x cubed is 1, the coefficient of x squared is 4, there is no x, so I do have to fill that spot in with a 0, and then the constant is a positive 4. So remember, the first number you bring down, there's nothing to do with it, you just automatically bring it down, and then you multiply negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, positive 4 and negative 2 if I combine different signs, so I subtract, keep the sign of the larger, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, 0 minus 4 is negative 4, negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, positive 4 plus 8 is 12. And so we get that same value that we anticipated we should get based off of plugging in um, negative 2. However, um, if I were to have done it this way, I would not be able to also give them the quotient and the remainder after division. Okay, So they're going to force you to do it this way because I also need to give them the quotient and the remainder. So remember, the back, this is the remainder, this guy is your constant, your x's, and your x squared. So how do you write k as a factor? It would be x minus a negative 2. And then here you have positive x squared, 1x squared, plus 2x minus 4. And then plus your remainder over... Oh, I put that there. I don't know why I put that there. It should be a remainder over your divisor. I'm getting ahead of myself. You do that later when you're trying to factor something. Right now, I'm not trying to factor it. I'm just trying to divide it. But later, we will use synthetic division to factor. Okay? And actually, I think that's this next one here okay so now they're talking about the factor theorem and the factor theorem states that if you do synthetic division with that k out here whatever that number is okay and you get a remainder of zero okay so if you do synthetic division with the k value a number here and you get zero well then what that means is that x minus k is a factor of the polynomial okay and vice versa if this is not zero then this is not a factor right so it says use the factor theorem to determine 
whether x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial. And so if I get 0, then the answer is yes, it is. If I don't get 0, then the answer is no, it is not. So what k value should I be putting out here? Remember, it's always the opposite sign of what's inside um, the divisor or the factor. Okay, So if I have a plus 2 here in my factor, I'm going to put a minus 2 here for my k. It's always the opposite sign. And then now the highest exponent I have here is x to the fourth. So I have to make sure that I have coefficients for every term after x to the fourth. So my coefficient here is positive 2, positive 1, negative 4. Here the x is missing. And then I have negative 8 for my constant. And then always bring down your first number, multiply, combine, multiply, combine, multiply, combine, and then combine. And since I got a remainder of 0, the answer is yes, x plus 2 is a factor of my polynomial p of x. Now, just for an example's sake, this is not part of this problem, but let's just say they asked me about x minus 3. Is this guy a factor? Okay, well, I would still have the same coefficients because this is the same polynomial. I have not changed the polynomial. All I'm asking is, is this guy now a factor? of this polynomial. So let's see, if x minus 3 is the factor I'm looking at, then that means that positive 3, the opposite sign, should be the k that I use here. And then follow your procedure for synthetic division. Bring down the first number, multiply, combine, multiply, combine, multiply, Combine, multiply, and combine. So here I got a remainder of 145. Now that's not 0, which means no, x minus 3 is not a factor of p of x. Okay? So only if you get a remainder of 0 can you say that x minus this value is a factor. But if you use a number here and you don't get 0, then x minus that number is not a factor. So here in the next topic is very fitting. It says use a given 0 to write a polynomial as a product of linear factors. Essentially what this means is they want you to factor it completely, okay? So we're going to use the fact that this one is a zero. Um, and there's another rule that you need to know here, okay? So we know that if the remainder is equal to zero for k, right, that means that x minus k is a factor, right? What it also means is that k is a zero. Because what happens when you set this factor equal to zero? You're gonna get x equals k, right? So, and these three statements are pretty much the same thing. So if you get a remainder of zero for a certain k value, then you know that that k is a quote unquote zero, an x-intercept, right? This is just a fancy word for x-intercept, okay? It doesn't say k is zero, it says k is a zero, okay? So I know because they're saying three is a zero that my remainder should equal zero. However, 
if I do the synthetic division, this polynomial will kind of shrink down and get a little bit factored. And then I can look at what I have from there to figure out how to factor it further. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the synthetic division for the number three. It's just the number by itself, so that is the k value given. If it were x minus three, then I would have to use the opposite sign to put out here. Now I have x cubed, so my coefficient for x cubed, coefficient for x squared, coefficient for x, and coefficient for, for my constant. Bring down the first number, multiply, combine, multiply, combine, multiply, combine. So I knew I was going to get zero because it says three is a zero. And we know that if a number is a zero, your remainder is going to equal K. I mean, your remainder is going to equal zero. So that's fantastic. I mean, that tells us exactly what we thought it was going to tell us. This is my constant. This is my X. This is my X squared. It also tells me that this is a factor of this polynomial. So x minus three is a factor of the polynomial. And x squared, one x squared minus two x minus two is what I have left, okay? And you can verify. You can verify if this is true or not. If you were to foil this all out or distribute it all out and combine your like terms, you will end up with this polynomial here, okay? I'm not gonna do that just to save time, but if you were to multiply the x in and then distribute the negative three in and then combine all your like terms, you will end up with this polynomial here, okay? So, now we have to factor this more. And since all I have here is a quadratic, I should be able to factor that pretty easily just using our factoring skills. Actually, I don't think this can be factored. Um, this, I don't believe, can be factored because there's no factors of 2 that will subtract to give me 2. However, I can still factor it. It's just going to look really weird, okay? What I can do is I can use my... Uh, quadratic formula negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 a c and you can use this is a b and c here or look at it here a b and c there you just need to remember there's no variables in the quadratic formula 2 times a so this should be able to help me to figure out what those factors are going to look like because I have to factor it, okay? That's what the directions say. Write the polynomial as a product of linear factors. It just so happens that these factors are probably going to look a little weird. Okay, so that means I'm going to have some really weird factors, but nonetheless, I have to put them in there. So I'm going to have minus 1 plus square root of 3, and then x minus 1 minus square root of 3. Now you can leave it like this and write this as your answer. If the double parentheses bothers you, you can distribute that negative, minus 1 minus square root of 3 and x minus 1 plus square root of 3. And this could also be your answer. So Alex will accept both of those, but I noticed in Alex solutions, once they figure out what the, the number values are here, they just leave it in this form, x minus that numerical value, x minus the other numerical value, okay? However, for me, I don't like to have double parentheses in my problems, 
just as a formality. So I usually like to expand it and distribute that negative and get rid of the double parentheses. So that one was a little weird, only in the fact that this wasn't easily factorable. So we kind of had to cheat and use our quadratic formula to figure out how to factor it. I mean, who on earth would have guessed that x minus this and x minus this was going to give me that polynomial, right? So just by, excuse me, just by default, every single time, once you get down to three numbers here, you can use those as your a, b, and c in the quadratic formula to figure out what the other two zeros are. Okay, so let's try to do that for this problem. It has my polynomial here, and I did make a typo. This should have an x. Um, it tells me negative one is a zero. So I know if I put negative one out here in the synthetic division, I will get zero. But we need to figure out what the a, b, and c are for this problem. So coefficient for x cubed, coefficient for x squared, coefficient for x, and then finally my constant. So I'm going to bring down the first number, multiply, then I get positive 4, multiply, I get negative 4, combine those, I get positive 1, multiply that, I get negative 1, and then there's my remainder of 0 that we anticipated. Now this, um, so we know that this is a 0 because they told, it, told us it was a 0. We also know it's a zero because we got remainder of zero. Now, if we want to figure out what the other zeros are, use this as your a, your b, and your c in your quadratic formula. Okay, so we get these are two values. So we've got three numbers here. We've got negative one, so our zeros here are negative one, negative two plus square root of three, and negative two minus square root of three. Those are the zeros, but I have to use those zeros to write the polynomial in factored form. So that means x minus a negative 1, x minus a negative 2 minus a square root of 3, x minus a negative 2 minus a negative square root of 3. And so this is what I get as my answer. You could also write it in its double parentheses form, right? x minus negative 2 plus square root of 3 and x minus negative 2 plus or minus square root of 3. I just, when I put them into the factor, I change all the signs. So that became positive, this became positive, this became negative, this one became positive, and that one became positive. So I kind of skip this step when I write them into their factored form by just changing all of the signs.